Mike Taylor Live is presented by Texas Cheer Liquor. And now, a man with giant areolas, Mike Taylor. This team sucks. Wouldn't you rather go 4 and 12? I guess that would be 16. I'd rather go 4 and 13. Because well, at least at least te- at least fan bases of teams that go 4 and 13, 5 and 12 whatever, at least they don't have any expectation or have any hopes or anything like that. The fucking Dallas Cowboys though like to win 12 games every year. Only to shit to bed in the playoffs. Let's get something square here. They beat Tampa Bay in January. They beat an 8-9 and nine Tampa Bay team that had no business being in the playoffs. And the only reason why the Bucs were in the playoffs in January is because, the, the, because of the NFL's stupid divisional system in which a shitty team can go to the postseason. Dak Prescott and the Cowboys and Jerry and Dan Quinn and Mike McCarthy and Dak and CD and Micah Parsons and on down... This, oh my God, where to begin and let's do it together. It's called Overreact, presented by the law office of Orlando Kill. We are at the Ringer Pub on Jones Moss Burger and Thousand Oaks. It's Taylor, it's DJ LG. The Cowboys just got their ass, balls, and penis handed to them. 48 34. Sorry for the cussing, but I mean, you cannot come up with them. There, there's nothing, there's no way to explain this game where it's a hyperbole. I'm not stunned they lost, but the fashion in which this team shit the bed didn't show up. I mean, you talk about dick and balls. They didn't. They don't have any. They didn't bring any to the ballpark. Uh, 48-32, actually the final. It is the overreact. The Green Bay Packers, who I warned you all week, are a good football team. And it would not stun me in the least if the Packers wind up playing in the NFC Championship game because they have a quarterback who has figured it out this year. Jordan Love will be an all-pro in this league real soon. He was, that's what the Packers do. They don't give a shit that they have a good quarterback. They draft another one because they know what's important. They don't get caught up in the bullshit that the Cowboys get caught up in. They're in the middle of Brett Favre's prime. Screw it, Aaron Rodgers is on the board. Let's draft him. He can sit four years and we'll turn him into a Hall of Famer. Same scenario with this kid, Jordan Love. He has figured it out, and for the last two and a half months, he has been one of the five best quarterbacks in football. And tonight, he was astronomically better than Dak Prescott, and everybody else on the Green Bay Packers was better than everybody else on the Dallas Cowboys. Don't let the score fool you. It wasn't 48-32. That felt like 48-7. A bunch of bullshit stats by Dak in the fourth quarter to make this thing 48-32. How embarrassing when Green Bay went to their backup quarterback and, hell, there was almost six minutes to play in the game. They were running dudes that don't even that aren't even active every week out there in that fourth quarter. So this was awful. This was ugly. You know, I could have, I could have dealt with the loss. I really could. I mean that. Had the Cowboys played real well, lost a hard fart game, and Green Bay played terrific, and the Cowboys lose 28-27 or 24-22 or, you know, what, 33-30 in overtime. That would have been fine. I wouldn't have been happy. That would have been, you don't want to say you would accept a loss, but I could live with a loss had they played even half ass. But they come out tonight and they show their ass and everybody should be fired, everybody, but unfortunately the owner's the general manager and he ain't firing himself. Let's talk about another Groundhog Day and I've got my TCU hat on because at least the Horn Frogs bring me some joy on occasion. Unlike this fucking football team that, you know, and look, I, and look, I gave up on this thing after the Eagles loss in November. On November the 5th, that was the last time we did a post-game show here at the Ringer. On November the 5th, when Dak shit the bed in winning time and they got beat by the Eagles, I came on here that night and declared there's no reason to put any faith and hope in this team. You should not get your emotions up. Dak Prescott's not the guy. He ain't it. 
And a lot of y'all annihilated me. A lot of y'all called me out. I talked about Dak and the organizational failure that this thing is going with the Joneses and how they're the Kardashians of the NFL and they have all this bullshit. There's just something in their water. They don't have the corporate knowledge that the Spurs did for a long time, all this kind of thing. And a lot of y'all annihilated me and called me a dumbass. Well, how you like me now? Where you at now? Where are you at now, haters, that came on here on November the 5th, the last time we were in this bar, when I declared what this thing was, and y'all y'all annihilated me because now I know it's different. It's going to be different now. Shit. There's people that do radio shows in this town that get paid to give their, give their takes that don't know what they're talking about. This is the football show of note, and here we go. It, it, I just, it can't get worse. Had they, again, I, 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 can, I, can, I don't want to, I don't want to, I wouldn't have been happy but I can swallow a loss. I mean, it's the NFL. I mean, anything can happen. Everybody's the same. I mean, other than Bal- you got Baltimore, San Francisco, then you got two or three shit bags at the bottom, and you got all these teams in the middle, and they're all kind of the same. So, look, I wouldn't have been shocked had the Cowboys lost. It is the fashion in which they lost. I was asked by a few people today before the game, do you think if the Cowboys lose that McCarthy's going to get fired? And my answer was, well, let me see the game. It depends. Again, had they played well and Mike coached his ass off and Dak played his ass off and Micah Parsons had three sacks and they just and Green Bay just played terrific, you tip your cap, what are you going to do? But because they got blown out the way they did, and it wasn't just that they got it – and it, they didn't just get blown out because Green Bay played great, which they did. Dallas didn't show up. They didn't show up. So because of that, yeah, I mean, there's no way you keep the coach. You know, I, I don't know what you do. I don't know who you bring in here. I don't No one worth their shit. Nobody has any, I mean, like Bill Belichick. Why on earth would he go work for the Joneses and take on a loser like Dak Prescott as his quarterback? He wouldn't. When you've got Josh Herbert and Sandy, or in L.A., why would you do that? So, I mean, sure, McCarthy's got to go, but who do you bring in? I don't know. You know, my, that, 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 that overrated, loudmouth, shit-talking, do-nothing in big game playing Micah Parsons loves Dan Quinn so much. Just, bring, just, just promote Dan Quinn. Oh, by the way, his team gave up damn near half a hundy. <laughs> the Cowboys, this is, this is worse than every, this is worse than all of them. This is worse than, I mean, at least, at least in the San Francisco game last year, the defense played great, but Dak sucked. But, but what, was, what was the score in the San Francisco game? It was like 19 to 12, 18 to 4, something like that. It was a hard-fought game. The defense played terrific against the 49ers, but Dak sucked. So, I mean, it's, this, this is 10 times worse than that. Uh, what was the, the Romo's best year when the Cowboys had the number one seed and they had the bye, and they lost to the Giants uh, when Wade Phillips was the coach. That was an embarrassment. That doesn't touch tonight. That doesn't touch now. You know, the Week 17 losses all these years when they had a chance to win the division and they'd shit the bed against the Redskins or the Eagles or whoever. This is the worst that it's ever been because of expectation and just where, where they were. You know, and even me, I, I allowed myself to get a little bit uh, I, I, you know, it's like, cool, let's go back to the, so the, in, on November the 5th is when they lost to Philadelphia, and that's when I came on this show, and that was it. I gave up on Dak. We filed, I, def, I filed divorce papers that night against Dak Prescott, but he begged me to go to counseling. I, we separated. I moved out of the house, right? I moved out of Dak's house, and we went, I agreed to go to counseling. I would hold off on the divorce, but we needed to go to counseling. Well, we had counseling. Fuck that bitch. I don't want nothing to do with Dak Prescott. And I know he didn't give up 48 points, but he gave up a pick six, and his ass showed up not ready to play neither. Dak Prescott, the 30-year-old all-pro quarterback, was just out there. He was just a guy. And when they got down early, he looked, he didn't look like he had any answers. He didn't look like he had it. I don't know that he had any energy. They're, how do you explain this? Their body language was shit from the beginning. It's like, dude, this is not the preseason. This is the playoffs. But once again, because of the lack of corporate knowledge, because of the poison pill 
that is that organization, those assholes showed up out there with a star on their helmet, and they thought they were just going to win the game because we're 8-0 at home. We're playing the Packers. We're better than they are. We can just show up and play half-ass and win. And they got their ass curb stomped, and they deserve it. They absolutely deserve it. I'm a Cowboy fan, but I don't, I don't, I don't come on here. I was, I was going to say I don't get paid. I, I guess I pay myself. It's our company. I don't pay myself to come on here. I don't take advantage of my – I don't take money from my advertisers and my sponsors to come on here and pump sunshine up nobody's ass. I'm a fan, but I'm going to tell you how things are. That team is an embarrassment. They suck, and I wish I was not a Cowboy fan, but damn it, I can't help it because I'm from the great state of Texas, and it's in my blood, and it sucks, and I don't want it to be. Those Arkansas hillbilly son of a bitches, those Joneses, who wants to work for them? Belichick. Bill Belichick is 71 years old. Why on earth would he want to ruin his old age and go to the Cowboys and work with a mediocre-ass, overrated Dak Prescott and have to put up with the bull crap that you have to put up with Jerry and his sons and his idiot daughter? When you've got L.A. sitting there with this all-world kid, Josh Herbert, if the Eagles get beat, uh, to, well, the Eagles play tomorrow night, if the Eagles get beat, they may fire Nick Sirianni. Why would, why would you come to Dallas if you're Belichick and pass on the Eagles job or the Chargers job? There's, that doesn't make any sense. So I don't want to hear about Bill Belichick unless Bill Belichick expresses mutual interest in that job, and I can't believe he will. I was shocked when Parcells took the job years and years ago. Um, but I, I'll, I'll bet you if Jerry fires McCarthy tomorrow and calls Belichick, Belichick's probably going to say no. He's probably going to call Bill Parcells, his mentor, by the way, and ask him about it, and Parcells is probably going to tell him not to take the job. Why would he, man? Not that he needs to call Big Bill, but still. It's just... It is the same old, same old, but this is as worse as it gets. And frankly, I don't know, but I mean, y'all are Cowboys fans, most of you. You know, we, we, we bread our butter, I guess we bread our butter, we butter our bread on the Cowboys in this city, and that's fine. But honestly, man, they can go 17-0 and next season, and are you going to show any iota of faith in that organization? You're a fool if you do. I'm out. I'll cover them. I'll talk about them. I'll be damned if I ever get any hopes up. And I and I, and I, and I filed for divorce after that Eagles loss that I mentioned a minute ago. But they played better since. Dak played a lot better since. He was good enough in the Lions game. You know, Dak was good enough in the Miami game that they lost. That, was not, that wasn't on Dak. That was on Dan Quinn's mighty defense. And, but, but I allowed a little bit of hope to creep in. And I, I'm mad at myself, honestly, for getting – I didn't get – I wasn't, like, jacked up. Okay, we're going to do it. But I had – I reluctantly decided to show some faith in Dak. And so that's why I tweeted on, I think, yesterday or this morning. I forget. Let's see, where's my tweet at? It's one of the worst tweets I've ever tweeted. And that's saying something because I've had some shitty tweets. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. So I tweeted. Where's my tweet at? Okay. Uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, hell. There you go. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Here we go. Where's it go? <laughs> okay. So I tweeted on the 12th. What's today? 14th? Okay. Two days ago. I wrote, since he melted down in winning time in Philly. And by the way, Dak did melt down in Philly in respectable people that are in the media, they get paid to talk football, call me an idiot. Where y'all at now? You ain't in here now talking no shit because your boy sucked. So I, on, on Friday, I tweeted, since he melted down in winning time in Philly, Dak Prescott has been phenomenal, and he was. Therefore, I'm going to reluctantly trust him. <laughs> we went to coffee, and he tried to put roofies in my coffee. Uh, give me a, so I wrote, give me a Dallas 49ers NFC title game with the Niners beating the Ravens in the Super Bowl. So my pick is, my, my pick's Ravens over the Niners, but I had Dallas losing to San Francisco, San Francisco in the NFC championship game, and boy, what a fool I am. I will never pick the Cowboys ever again to win a playoff game, and I don't give a damn if they're 17-0. and 0. It don't make a damn. They, I'm, I don't, I'm, no, Dak's not the only reason they got beat tonight, but he's the quarterback, and he didn't play well either. The pick six, and the, he was inaccurate as he's been in two months. He played as he played poor as poor today 
It's been since the Phoenix game, really, when they got beat by Arizona. Remember, they got beat by Arizona, then they got annihilated in San Francisco, and C.D. Lamb went in there and was like, what the hell, guys? Let's go. Give me the ball. And, and, and the Cowboys turned it around. Dak was as bad today as, he's, as he was in that Phoenix game in the first six weeks of the season. He was, I mean, he was better in the Philadelphia game in which they lost in November, which I gave up on him. You see, he's, he's, a, he's a $59 million cap hit next year. I think the Cowboys need to take the, hat, the cap hit, eat the money, and move on from Dak Prescott as their quarterback, but they won't. They don't have the balls because they don't do the things that Green Bay does. Do you think the Cowboys would have the balls to draft a quarterback high in the draft with Dak Prescott as the current starter? No. The Packers do. That's what they do every time. They don't, the, the Cowboys, they, they might win 12 regular season games when they get to feast on the Giants and the effing Redskins and an Eagles team that, shit, that, that, that collapsed. But when, you, when you, you compare them to the elite organizations around the league, and I know the Steelers haven't won in a while, but it's not because of lack of coaching or management. The management is solid in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, New England, Buffalo, Baltimore, San Francisco, Green Bay. These are the elite front offices from the owner to the president and the GM all the way down to the staff. Those are the elite franchises in football. Maybe the Houston Texans are coming up now that those idiot McNairs got out of the way of D'Amico Ryans and their general manager, but it is the same old bullshit in Dallas. They are regular season wonders. They're like a pop star. They got a whole bunch of hits. They got a whole bunch of clicks. They got a whole bunch of likes, and they ain't, you can't even compare them to the best singers of all time because at the end of the day, when you put the Cowboys up, when you put Taylor Swift up against Marvin Gaye, Taylor Swift sucks. The Cowboys are Taylor Swift. The Packers, the Steelers, the Patriots, the Bills, these are the Marvin Gays uh, of the NFL world. All right, that's it. it, it, it fire everybody, I mean, all of them. I, I, I don't know why you would give, I mean, I, I've heard all year long. You have to give Micah Parsons an extension. No, you don't. You ain't got to give nobody an extension. It's the NFL. You got to play 54 some bitches every week. You got to activate 48 of them. One guy playing edge rusher does not make that much impact. Micah Parsons, this was his worst season since he got in the league. But he'll he'll go. I'm sure he'll go on his podcast this week and he'll vow that he'll. I'm gonna have 30 sacks next year. Get the fuck out of here. Loud mouth, ass talking. If Micah Parsons were not in Dallas. Y'all barely know he would just be another good player in the league, but because he's got a star on his helmet, y'all are ready to build. I mean, Craig Miller uh, of 1310 The Ticket in Dallas, Texas. Here we go. Uh, is a radio, Craig Miller hosts a radio show in Dallas. Craig Miller, I'll never forget. Craig Miller, who I, I like that show. Craig Miller said in October, uh, Micah might be, he might wind up being the greatest edge rusher of all time. He ain't the greatest edge rusher in his own goddamn division. God, the overrating of the Cowboys, I'm so sick of it. I'm tired of it. I'm done with it. I'm over it. It, it makes me sick. You know, RJ Ochoa, who just got him a radio gig in this town on Friday. He, he jumped my ass on November the 5th. And he, I don't know how anybody... Uh, I could never ever think that Dak Prescott lost this game. Fuck you, he totally lost the game. Dak Prescott's a loser. Dak Prescott is a 4,000-yard, 35-touchdown passing, 118% passer rating, Pro Bowl-making loser. And, yes, you can be all those things and more. I was right on November the 5th after the Phillies loss. I'm right tonight. It's the same old Cowboys. This is who they are. This is is what they do. It is Groundhog Day all over again. All right. So we've established that McCarthy's got to go. Um, and I like Mike McCarthy, and I've defended Mike McCarthy. I praised Mike McCarthy. I was wrong about Mike McCarthy. Um, I, there's a, I don't know who you bring in that's going to make this change. You know, from Chan Gailey to, uh, to Dave Campo to Parcells to Wade to Garrett to McCarthy, the, the, the names change, the faces change, the players change, the opponents change, and the results don't. It is an organization, it's, a, it's an Enron-like organizational failure from the top. And until you get that squared away, 
This is what it's going to be, and I will never put any faith in that shitbag organization again. They're a 12-win heaven, four Pro Bowl heaven. Uh, oh, no, they got four all pro. There, there are 12. Let me rephrase this I've been drinking. There are 12 win having, seven Pro Bowl having, four all pro having, loser organization. And you can be all those things. It's the damnedest thing. There's some scholar out there who's a lot smarter than I am who can maybe write a book on this one day because it is, I've never seen anything like it in the history of the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys post Jimmy Johnson all the way to now, and Jimmy's 80. <laughs> um, it, it has been 30 years of Groundhog Day, and I know y'all love them, and y'all are going to get all excited for training camp, and I'm going to talk a lot of Cowboys next season because you want me to, but my God, it, it, don't you dare ever put any faith in these sons of bitches again. All right, subscribe to this show for free. You can become a member if you want. It's only six bucks a month. Um, that's nothing. Starbucks is more expensive than that, and that's, that's, that's one coffee. Six bucks a month buys you membership. You get all of our exclusive members-only content. The, I mean, I don't even know where to begin with some of the stuff that's flying in tonight. So that's it. I mean, yeah, you, you got to fire everybody for sure. Um, but the, the facts are, but who do you bring in? That's where it's going to fix the organizational sickness. You're not. Just know that. I agree that McCarthy needs to get fired. Let's say they just promote Dan Quinn or they go, they, they bring in somebody else. I don't know who it would be. It ain't going to be Belichick. I mean, I would love, I would love that, but I just don't see it. I don't know why Bill would do it. He may, but I mean, I'm, I, I would love to be wrong. I would love Bill Belichick because I think he'd bring a toughness. He would bring, he would bring those emotional intangibles that that flat in the front ass team lacks. I just don't see, I just don't see Belichick doing it. I don't know why he would want to go through that. And he's 71. You go work for Jerry, he's going to put him in the grave earlier than he should be. It's bullshit. It's, 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 the, it's the craziest thing that I have ever seen in any pro sport um, ever. I, I mean, I, I've even read a lot of history about sports, shit that happened before me. Jim Thorpe, the Green Bay Packers of the 60s, the Lions of the you – know, Bobby Lane's Detroit Lions of the 50s. You know, I've read a lot of sports history. I, I cannot think of any organization ever in the history of modern professional athletics in this country. I haven't, I haven't, okay, I haven't studied all of the African soccer teams or anything like that, but in American professional sports franchise history, I cannot think there is another, another storyline that even comes close to the baffling storyline of the Cowboys and the underachievement and the hype and the bullshit. You know, I used to call them the UT of the NFL. At least my boy Sark got them to the final four this year. At least he did that. Cowboys, they can't get out of the second damn round. It is, it's, it's unprecedented, and in, in, in certainly in modern times, in modern times. And that's it. I mean, it's the same stuff. You can go pull my post-game show from last year and the year before and the year before and the year before and the year before and the year before, and it's the same shit. Wolf and Man is in here. I totally agree with everything. As a Bears fan, I was hoping for the Cowboys to spank these young, inexperienced Packers. Sadly, they didn't know they weren't supposed to have a chance. I have deep hate for the Packers and their whole fan base and organization. That's fine. I get why you have a hate for the Packers. I don't like the Packers either. But you cannot argue with the Packers and the professionalism in which their owners and their management team handles their organization. You cannot argue with the fact that the Packers, they don't, yeah. The reason why hardly, hardly any of us can name their roster is because they're not Dallas. I guarantee you, this kid Dobbs that torched the Cowboys' asses, if he, if he were a Cowboy, y'all think he was going to go to the Hall of Fame. But he plays in Green Bay, he's off the radar, but they don't care in Green Bay about being on the radar. They're a professional organization, and they just keep their head down, and they don't put up with bullshit and all they care about is winning they even they dumped Aaron Rodgers they got even tired of his bullshit they dump they, they get sick of Aaron Rodgers and his crap they run his ass out of there Aaron Rodgers didn't want all these receivers that you saw annihilating the Cowboys tonight and owning all pros and pro bowlers in the Dallas secondary Rodgers didn't want to play with them because they weren't very good he wanted to, he wants Manny Lazard and Randall Cobb 
And so the Packers, are, the Packers are like, bye. Bye, Felicia. We're going to trade all your asses to the Jets. And how did it go? Where's Rodgers tonight and where's the Packers? It's beautiful. Because the Packers don't have time for bullshit. They just want to win. And it's it, – it, but. So I don't like the Packers either, but I am not, like, just like I said, I don't come on here to pump no sunshine. I come on here to tell you how it is, regardless of who I want to win. The Drew Show. I just hope that the Bear 210 finally stops off this Dallas Cowboys fetish. I mean, 30 years of humiliation. That's a fetish. It's all good, Mayor of Sport. You grew up in the so-called Metro sex. San Antonio needs to stop being DFW South. <laughs> uh, it's baffling to me why y'all continue. I I'll tell you right now, it's baffling because we've been a Cowboys town forever. We're more passionate about the Cowboys than the city of Dallas, and that's just the way we are, and that's fine. It's, 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 it's frustrating, but that's never going to change, and I don't want it to. It's fun. I mean, I'm having a good time. But I'll tell you this, if, Houston, if Houston's about ready to take off, I can see my Cowboy talk. I'm never going to get rid of my Cowboy. I get, here's my Texans talk. My, I don't, there is no Texans talk. Here's Cowboy talk. There is no. But I'm not saying, it, I'm not saying it's going to do that. But if the Texans are here and the Cowboys are here, it may start to do this a little bit. Because I pride myself on many things on this show. I am never not going to talk about the Cowboys because I want to stay employed. Because y'all love the Cowboys and I'm going to feed you what you want. But my show's for winners. It is not for losers. And unfortunately, outside of the Spurs, y'all are very passionate about a bunch of losers that play in Dallas. And that's fine. I would rather talk about winners. And if the Texans are about to start doing a bunch of real winning, then we'll probably mix in some more Texans talk as we go because, frankly, I mean, we might as well talk a little bit of Texans. They're playing next week, bitches. She, golly, what an embarrassment. Chris, yeah, that was one of your worst takes. Come on, Mayor. He's talking about the Friday tweet where I said, I, and I, now that's why I protected my butt by saying I reluctantly show faith I'm going to reluctantly trust Dak. I went against my instincts. I went against history. I went against my own hunch. I will never do that again. Late punch to me for allowing myself to show one inch of hard wiener over Dak and the Cowboys, and it was dumb. It was dumb. And I'll never do it again. Darian. Sorry, but Houston has the better quarterback. Why are you apologizing, Darian? You don't need to say sorry. Houston does have the better quarterback. He's already better than Dak, and he's played and he's been in the league for four months. C.J. Stroud is all of the intent. He's got the talent, obviously. But C.J. Stroud, and he's look, it's one game, but he was terrific. I thought Cleveland was going to win. C.J. Stroud has the intangibles from the neck up that Dak does not have. I'm not saying Dak's dumb. I'm saying Dak does not have a championship gear. And I know that that's an intangible. That's, that's not data full. Well, there is some data behind it. Go look at Dak's playoff history. <laughs> Dak Prescott, when, the, when, when things get hard this time of the year against good teams, he becomes just a guy. Not terrible but just a guy. And I haven't seen anything said in postgame tonight. We've been on this, we've been on this show. I'll, when I get home tonight, I'll read it all and all this kind of thing. All, all I know is if I'm Dallas here, I have to evaluate everything. But the, here's the thing, y'all. They're not going to start over. Jerry Jones is 80. He is not going to release Dak. He may fire McCarthy, but he ain't releasing Dak. If anything, they're going to give Dak Prescott a contract extension. Y'all get ready for that because he's a $59 million cap hit next year, and they're going to want to get out from underneath Dak's cap hit, right? And so they could, they could cut him and just eat the hit. They could let him play next year with the $59 million deal and let him go to free agency, which would be okay with me. But their concern is if we're paying one guy $59 million, we're not going to be able to field a roster around the 
So what? What are you going to do? Not win any playoff games? Big deal. You know, and I've been told that, well, we got we, we to gotta, we gotta extend Dak's deal, move all of his bonus money to the future because it'll free up money to bring in Mike, to, to re-sign Micah Parsons. I'm not even sure you need to re-sign Micah Parsons at this point. Micah Parsons needs to play till he's a free agent. Micah Parsons is not J.J. Watt. He's not T.J. Watt. He's not Nick Bosa. He ain't Joey Bosa. He ain't Miles Garrett. He's a very good edge rusher in the NFL, but he's not, a, he's not one of these must signs. Take all that money you give Micah and just put, spread it out around the world. I would rather have a bunch of pretty good guys on defense than have one all pro and a bunch of slap dicks because I gave all my money to the edge rusher who's overrated. I'm tired of the Micah Parsons talk. He is overrated. The Drew Show, thank you for your $5 contribution, sir. 30 years of humiliation for Poodle San Antonio Cowboy fan. I hope you realize that when people see you wear the merch, it's a Scarlet's letter of shame. <laughs> Mike, you're exempt. You grew up in the Metro sex. I'll oh, quit bagging all San Antonians. The Poodles, there are 31 other teams in the NFL to pick from. It ain't that hard, homie. Dude, you got people that put cowboy flags draped over their coffins when they die in this town, Holmes. We ain't never given up on the cowboys. I guarantee you, these cowboy fans in this town would rather go through this shit every year than jump teams. I'm not going to do that. It's passionate. It's family. It's in the bloodline. It's, it's passed down generation to generation going back to Dandy Don Meredith and Eddie LeBaron in this town. We're not going to give up on the cowboys. We're just going to sit up here and bitch about them every year in January. Taylor, our mayor of sport, is vibrating like Jim Cornette. Do you want a double cheeseburger and Sprite Zero? Want to swing a tennis racket? Nah, I'm rolling, baby. I'm effing rolling. Geechee SA, thank you for your contribution. Time to clean house. I, uh, I, I, all them motherfuckers can get fired as far as I'm concerned. I don't give a shit who comes back. Miguel Mascoro, I yelled, here we go, out loud during the pick six. By the way, here, here, the, who, who's tired of hearing, here we go, who's tired of hearing that shit? Win the Super Bowl, and it's cool. Get your ass hounded to you in the first round on, at home. It's time to get rid of that stupid ass. Here we go. We need a new cadence signifier next season. That is a signifier. It's a signal. It's part of their sequence. It lets, the, it lets them know it's a signal. It's, it's a jumping off point into a series of signals and calls that he has. It's stupid. I'm tired of hearing it. Here we go now represents losing, like every other thing represents losing with them. And it is a scarlet letter. It is. What's up, Miguel Moscoto? $2, $2 donation through chat. Cripes, man. Cripes, cripes, cripes. Joe Gonzalez, I don't care anymore. Go UTSA. You lying, Joe. You'll be back hype next year. You know it. <laughs> Tucker D, we should not be mad because the Cowboys do this to us every year since 96. We're just happy they made the playoffs. Okay, I mean, that's one way to look at it. Lower all expectations, and it don't matter if she cheats on you with your brother. Speaking of brothers, here's my brother, the truck driver. Talk about the Mavericks. F off, Matt. The Mavericks suck. And Castellanos homers to left. <laughs> I don't know if they put on this headset again. Ah, <laughs> oh, gee. San Antonio leads a Latino-owned team. E Do we have a Latino-owned team? White Arkansas hillbillies own the Cowboys. At least San Antonians own the Spurs. The Holts are white, but they're San Antonio people. Hey, hey, that lady, that, hey, that lady that's part of the Mitieta family, she's part owner of the Missions. E Missions. The Missions are Latino. Not only Latino, they're Latina, aren't you? <laughs> uh, it's all, it's, it's just, it's bit, I'm going through tweets and text. It's just, it's vitriol. I thought, oh, poor Jimmy Johnson. I thought Jimmy Johnson was going to have a heart attack at the half. Jimmy, look, after all these years, Jimmy still cares about the Cowboys. He just got put into the ring of honor two weeks ago. He was excited, obviously, for the Cowboys' chances, and so I just saw how disappointed he was at the half and mad. You think McCarthy's giving brimstone speeches like that? Shit, no. Shit, no. 
Shit, no. What do you? But I don't. I don't even know what to say about Dan Quinn. It's obvious that Jerry sucks. It's obvious that Dak Prescott's a loser. It's obvious that Mike McCarthy lost the room and he needs to be fired. They quit on him tonight. But Dan Quinn, what on earth was that? That's the game plan you put forth. I mean, Dan's the one guy that I think most Cowboy fans, try, if you had like, if you lined every, every human being up in that organization from Jerry all the way to the kid that washes the socks, and you list them in order of who I trust the most, Dan Quinn's probably number one. I trust Dan Quinn more than I trust Micah Parsons or Dak Prescott or even C.D. Lamb, especially after tonight. I need, I need, to, I need to address C.D. here in a minute. I don't know how to explain Dan Quinn tonight. That is... All week of practice and film and scouting? A Cowboys defense that was top ten across the board? A Cowboys defense that had a corner who broke the all-time interceptions record and the all-time pick six record a season? A, a, a Cowboys defense that is one of the best pass-rushing defenses in the league? A Cowboys defense that's good against the run? And you go out and you give up 42? I'm, 48 was because of Dak. 42? is what you give up. You know, on the coaching, it's clear to me that Matt LaFleur, the Green Bay coach, he and his staff, he knew that they were going to out-coach the Cowboys. You know how I knew that? Because Green Bay won the, call, the coin flip. And all of the analytics say defer. All of them do. But LaFleur was so confident in his game plan against Dan Quinn he thought, nah, let's go ahead. If we win the toss, let's go ahead and take the ball. Let's set the tone early because we're going to run it down their fucking throat and we're going to hang seven on them right off the bat, and they did. That tells me that the Packers knew that they had a game plan that was going to be successful today, and it was in spades, in spades. That was a giving, that was a telling decision by the Packers to, def to, take, to take the ball. Mandalore Link with $5. Preach, Taylor, cowboy girlfriend, got us again. Boy, she had, a, she had an orgy with your, with your daddy and all of his truck driving buddies. She gonna get that, you're going to get that DJ LG money and that divorce. You can do some traveling. She's been so awful to you this year. Shout out to DJ LG. Repping as always. Couldn't do it without him. Ruben Espinosa with a $2.00. $2 tip. Thank you, Ruben, that paid for this Dos Equis. Jerry Jones is the curse. Retire his old ass. You know, I might just be a blowhard talk show host, but boy, one of these days we're going to get a, we're going to get breaking news. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. How's it, dude? You're gonna be able to. You're gonna be able to hear the cheers. It's gonna be like. It's gonna like be like the South Side on, on New Year's Eve at midnight. E Jerry died. Y'all are gonna be firing off guns. E throwing your roosters out in the yard, letting the pit bull run around the neighborhood for free. E go free, go free. It's to the point now where it's like if if he'll just hurry up and get died, maybe we can turn things around as an organization because there's no question that there's an organizational, there's a structural company flaw and crack in that scene. It's, it's incredible. It's, in, it's unbelievable. All right, a uh, couple of, uh, one more point on C.D. Lamb, and we're going to get out of here because the fighting Dan Campbells are playing, and I want to watch them. Something was up with C.D. Lamb today, and here's a guy who was the best wide receiver in the league all year long, was dominant all year long, kicked everybody's ass regardless of the competition, showed leadership by going in there and telling the Cowboys to get in the ball. That wasn't him being a DB. That was him being a leader um, and, and had an all-pro year and deserved it. And something was wrong with him today. I don't know what it was. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. But he and Dak were talking early. He was out of the game mentally. You could tell McCarthy never goes over and talks to an individual player the way he talked to CD. And this was early in the game. It was what seven? It was only seven. I don't was I don't, I don't know. Was it fourteen nothing or seven to nothing? But it was early in the game when they showed McCarthy over there with his hand on CD's shoulder, like giving him a pep talk. 
Something was up his ass today. Because of course. Because of course, C.D. Lamb, who's the best wide receiver in the world all year, has mental problems in the playoff game. Something a distraction. Of course, Brandon Aubrey, who broke the all-time record for most consecutive field goals made to start a career, who was first team all pro. Of course he doinks the crossbar uh, uh, the upright again today. Because of course he does. Because he's a cowboy. It, uh, you can dig up the bones of Bob. Uh, well, Bob Lilly ain't dead. Give me a dead cowboy. You can dig up the bones of Bullet Bob Hayes. Mike Taylor shows on Bob, uh, Bob Lilly. You can go get the bones of Bob Hayes. Resurrect him from the dead. Put him into his prime. Run him out there. And he's probably going to have a bad game. Everybody that comes through here right now is cursed. There's a y'all talk about the Taylor curse. There's a Jerry Jones curse. And there has been for 30 years. And we thought he resurrected it the other day when he decided to put Jimmy into the ring of honor, and it didn't work. It's the same old crap. And not only is it the same old crap, it's the it's worse than ever. This is like I said, it's worse than the Giants loss in 07 or whenever it was, when the Cowboys had the number one seed, and Wade Phillips said, Well, we won the first half. Uh, that was his excuse for losing. It's worse than anything that we ever saw with Garrett. It's worse than the San Francisco loss in January. This is rock bottom. And you have a hundred, I mean, you have, you, you don't have a shit ton of cap room. You don't have any. You have a $59 million cap hack next year in your quarterback. You have an edge rusher that you are convinced you have to give an extension to, and you don't. And it's bullshit. You don't have to do that. All right. This is, unfortunately, our last Cowboys overreact of the season. And that really stinks. And it sucks that it comes under this way. This show could not have been done all year long without two people. One, Lawrence Goins, DJ LG. This show is not possible without him. And uh, good to see you, man. Good to meet you. Got some Patriots fans in here. I know. I would like him. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't know why. I love Belichick. I think, I think he'd bring toughness. I'm with you. I think Belichick might be the one human being on the planet who can come in here and put some god dang toughness into the room and make hard-ass decisions and not worry about feelings and bullshit. But, I'll, but he's got to put up with those idiots in the, in the owner's box. This show's also not possible this season without Orlando Kell, the official lawyer and attorney of this show. He also is who brings you uh, people I want to punch. Wednesday, Orlando and I, we talked last summer, and I told him, hey, man, I'm thinking about doing a Cowboys postgame show God knows I don't want to give up my Sundays, but it's the Cowboys. I'm going to watch him anyway. It's fun. Do you have an interest in maybe helping us out? And Orlando was the guy who stepped up and paid for this show, and I am forever grateful to Orlando. Um, thank you, man. Couldn't have done it without him. If you need an attorney, especially if you need a family attorney, Orlando Kell is the official family lawyer of Thunderdome and Mike Taylor Live and Overreact and people I want to punch Wednesday. And hopefully we'll continue to support us uh, with on Wednesday shows. Orlando Kell, he handles family law and he specializes in helping guys. He's big on helping dudes. And whether you're about to get divorced, you've been filed against, you need to file. Maybe you've already gotten divorced and maybe you want to change up your decree. Living situation change, visitation change, job status change. You got to get something changed legally in the paperwork. Orlando does that too. Hit him up at 210-775-4995, 210-775-4995, or you can email him directly, and it's on the screen if you're watching, Orlando Kell Law at gmail.com, Orlando Kell Law at gmail.com. That's it. We're done. Now it's time to go watch NFL football teams that actually give a shit about winning a lot of games. And don't get in their own way because they have corporate bullshit and ignorance. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I don't know who. I, I, I guess I'm rooting for the Texan, whoever has Texan players. I guess I'm rooting for the Texans to hell with it. Might as well. Go Texans. I know. I know. Aaron Jones repping the El Paso. Oh, who's from El Paso? Let me hear from El Paso. Say here. Shout out. Orale El Paso. Aaron Jones. Eee. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> we got a Texan coach of the Lions. We got Dallas's own Matthew Stafford. We got the Houston Texans. We got reasons to root. Cowboys, be done. We'll see how the drama goes. 
That's it. Thank you to Lawrence. Thank you to Orlando. Thank you to Thunderdome. Thank you to The Ringer. The season's over. We'll see you next season. Love you all hard. Go Cowboys. There they go. This program was made possible by contributions from viewers and listeners like you. Thank you. This is a rock bound.